welcome to Books Unbound, the podcast where we unbind books to get to their hearts with your hosts, us. It's Ariel and Raylene. Hello. Ah, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 29. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not quite 29 yet. Nope, you're right. I was actually going to say, I don't know about you, but it feels like fall happened yeah. this week. Yeah, it really did. It rained all weekend and genuinely on Saturday, like mm. it was just straight rainy all day long. And I had so much fun. Like I was like, I'm just going <laughs> to drink tea and crochet and watch yeah. spooky movies. And it was so good. It was just what I, I needed. I love that. I feel like it really truly for me just in the last week, It last week was summer, this week it's fall. It just, over the span of one week, the weather dropped, yeah. it's been cold. I'm wearing sweatpants. I've been wearing a cardigan all the time. Yeah. It's been like properly fall and I'm here for it. Well, I yeah. feel like we had a terrible summer <laughs> in Nova Scotia. It yeah. was just like, I follow somebody on Instagram who she lives in like, I don't know, she lives around Boston, I think. So we're all part of the East Coast. Yeah. And she posted, she's like, it hasn't, there hasn't been a non-rainy weekend since June. Oh. And I was like, <laughs> that's yeah. Wrong. That's weird. It's like true. Like, that's what our summer was like. It was so rainy. But right now, the fall has been really some like really bright but a little chilly mm -hmm. a little windy and every time i look outside i actually see leaves falling <gasps> <laughs> so oh, it feels like perfect. fall I, i'm like aha that's I where the name that. comes from well that reminds me of like one of the things i did this weekend was uh, me and a couple of my friends got together on friday night for a mabin celebration which is like one Ooh, of the pagan that? holidays oh. one of the sabbats and they're yeah. We've kind of decided that we want to just celebrate each one when they roll around because yeah, they all celebrate fun. like the time of year. And that's what's really mm -hmm. cool about all of these things. And so Mabin is like the autumn equinox, I think. It's kind of like the okay. beginning of autumn. And so we just like cooked up a bunch of autumnal foods and then had a picnic oh, in the park cool. and like lit candles and just just hung oh, out and like talked wow. about what we we're grateful for. Because it's kind of like the Thanksgiving oh. of the yes. pagan holidays as well. Cool. So. It was just lots of fun. And uh, I did a cartwheel, which was really cool. What? I haven't done that in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> we were just like, let's see what we're still capable of. We're still young and I could do a cartwheel. So that was cool. But yeah, I'm proud it, of was, you. it was I've, really cool. It was nice. I've, I've never, never had a picnic a at nighttime before, but we like had a yeah. 7.30 to 10.30 p.m. picnic, <laughs> which was okay, a lot of fun. That's funny because literally the other day I asked Connor when does fall start because yeah. i was like i don't know if it's today or tomorrow and he was like oh i'll look it up and he looked it up he's like it starts tonight at 2 30. i was like 2 30. <laughs> he's like i don't know this website says <laughs> it's exactly at 2 30. that's like the equinox or whatever Whoa. and i was like wow so okay so you didn't wait for 2 30 but that's reasonable no no yeah <laughs> i don't even know if it was the exact day it was just yeah it yeah. was friday we, the, we always try time. and make it as close to the day as possible whenever we're yeah. all available so next up is Samhain, which is Halloween, so that's pretty exciting. Oh, yeah! Everybody gets excited. I love for that. that for you guys. Very witchy. Yeah, Very I know we're like witchy. we, we, you know, we we want to embrace the witchiness, and that's yeah. uh, that's about as far as we'll go. And uh, <laughs> it's, I'm happy with that. <laughs> I was also saying I've never done a cartwheel in my life. No one ever taught me how. Oh my God! So I, maybe I could teach you how. <laughs> yeah, before I hit thirty, I would like maybe I got to put that on my list. Yeah, um, it's so much fun. It's so liberating. Yeah, it looks like it's to very just become freeing. a wheel. Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> to leave the human form and become the functional yep. perfect wheel. <laughs> that's what um, I felt like. That's awesome. I also well, before we get too far away from the fall topic, I don't know if you can see it on camera, Raylene. Um, I'm really hoping that the people can because I purposely put it behind oh. me here. But I finished my little bunting, oh. my knitted bunting. Oh, there it bunting. is. It was, it was sneaky. I couldn't see it. see it. Yeah, I can see it. It isn't going to be hanging on the bookshelf, but I literally just put it there for this episode so that you That's guys so could cute. see it. That's so cute. And I'll do a close-up of B-roll right now, but I did finish my little knitting project, and I think it looks adorable. That's incredible. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm currently crocheting I'm a ghost hat. And oh! I'm kind of making it up as I go along, so I don't know how it's going to look, but I'll keep you posted I on love the ghost that. hat. <laughs> well, okay. We have a really good episode today, you guys. Oh, Not yeah. only are we feeling the fall vibes, but we have, of course, a reading update to share with you guys. Raylene has a little bit of a book haul, but mm. I got an exciting 
package in the mail. <gasps> I have my birthday present Heck from yeah. Raylene. So I'm going to be opening that live on the air. We are also going to be doing our quarterly update. Last one. Uh, which is very exciting. So we're going to be going through our spreadsheets, talking stats, talking facts. <laughs> um, and we're also going to be um, talking with James of Shelf Worn Drawn, yes. who illustrated this quarter's bookmarks. Mm -hmm. So that'll be fun as well. We'll have um, him on for a little interview and get to know him a little bit. So it's going to be a really great episode. Yeah, it's packed. I want to start with my present. That's always the best place to start. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> I am extremely excited about it. And it's been sitting over there for a couple days now. Yeah. I'm so glad it got anymore. to you in time. I was so nervous because I, know. I, all of a sudden, a couple weeks ago, just realized like, oh my God, Ariel's birthday is coming up. I haven't bought a single thing. Ooh. And I need to ship it, like, by, you know, four days from now in order to get it there yeah, on time. Yeah. So I threw it together kind of quickly, but I think it worked out. I think I succeeded. Okay. I, um, yeah, my birthday is on Wednesday. So today is Monday. Oh, so it's so a little soon. early, but it's not that early. And also oh. if we, um, if we recorded it next episode, it would be, like, six days after. So it's, like, this is better. We would have been this. so far away from your birthday by the time it came out. It would have been irrelevant. It would have made more sense to just throw it away. <laughs> just forget about it. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. I saw something, and I'm just going to... I'm going to reach into this bag of wonders. Yeah, there's a lot of items here. in there. I kind of threw together a big... <laughs> it's a crocheted pumpkin <laughs> that has slightly been deformed it's got a little by the post. But... Okay, okay. No, that's nothing. I just that's stuffed it with nothing. yarn, so it should be nice and squishy. <laughs> I absolutely love this, and I was saying to Connor, if there isn't a pumpkin in here, I'm going to start a fuss. Well, and I um, almost <laughs> was like, how do I put a pumpkin in here? Because usually I stick an actual stick to it. And yes. I was planning on, I wanted to make your present as flat as possible to make it easier to ship. And so, and then I remembered the pumpkin and I was like, what am I going to do? So I, I crocheted the stick instead. I to like make it more that flat. his little stem is crocheted. It's really, really cute. Um, I love this. Thank you so much. I really, if, if this was the only thing you shipped me that it, I would have been happy. <laughs> I, I really wanted an orig a Raylene original pumpkin to add to my pumpkin patch. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll be putting in some B-roll right now that I'll add of how my pumpkin patch has grown because last, it was last year, right? I think so, yeah. yeah. Last year, Raylene crocheted me two little pumpkins. Mm -hmm. So this is exciting too, Raylene, that it's a different size. Yeah, I've gotten That's a lot important. better, bigger, you know, yeah, yeah, better yeah. the pumpkin thing. It's beautiful. Um, but yeah, Raylene sent me two little pumpkins and I instantly was obsessed with them and ever since like if i'm in a crafty type store i'm looking for pumpkins yeah. and i have added two more to Ooh. my collection so now i'm at five or six crocheted pumpkins amazing thank you you're welcome that is amazing <laughs> um okay i'm just reaching in randomly yeah, just grab whatever there's no order to oh. do this in okay this feels like a graphic novel maybe Great choice of uh, <laughs> tissue paper here. It's just what I had on hand. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. <laughs> Yay. Oh, this is fantastico. Okay. Fantastico. This, this is Mamo, I think. Mamo? Could be anything, I suppose. My <laughs> sass millage. This is extremely funny because I want to say for my birthday last year. Yes. Or for oh, Christmas yeah. last I think year. it was your birthday, yeah. So Raylene was like, are there any books you specifically want? Mm -hmm. And I was like, Mamo, <laughs> because it was just a really good graphic novel. Yeah. But I also mentioned a few other things and you got me some other things. Yeah. And that's obviously fine. So then at some point in the last year, Raylene was like, have you heard of Mamo? <laughs> I and I was forgot. like, yeah, this is a book that <laughs> I mentioned to you last year. And you were like, oh, I forgot, I forgot. Then a couple of months ago, Raylene was like, have you heard of Mamo? <laughs> I, I have like, some really? kind of blank in my brain for that book. Yes, I don't know. <laughs> I've heard of it. I really, really want that book. And you were like, oh. And then here it is. That's so exciting. I'm glad I didn't buy it because I was thinking of like, I was like, I got to give up on Raylene. I was really She's worried that gonna you were going to buy it. Um, and <laughs> here's the other fantastic. fun thing. I also bought it for myself. So we can <gasps> okay, buddy read, read it. We also need to buddy read that other graphic I know. novel you got us. <laughs> but this one is um, more timely because it's witchy. It's it's yes. perfect for the season. 
It's got crows in it. Ooh. For some reason, that seems important to me. I really love crows a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is it? Oh, Orla, the youngest in a long line of hedge witches, mm. is compelled to return at home after the death of her grandmother, Mamo. In the wake of Mamo's passing, seas are impossible to fish. Crops have soured. Even Joe's attic is taken over by a poltergeist. Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> Classic. Um, <laughs> It sounds like so much fun, right? and it does look very it's autumnal. Gorgeous. Um, so yeah, I want to read that you. stat. You're welcome. That is, that's honestly perfect. <laughs> that's funny. I'm Memo. glad that we can finally end that saga. <laughs> that, that saga's finally done. <gasps> oh, <laughs> wow! Just a cute I got notebook. a little notebook with beautiful. Oh, and it's gritted. Really, that's my favorite. Oh, really? Well, that worked yes. out. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm Gritted, glad. I think, is the, the superior. I wasn't sure if that was the move. I just really liked the cover of it. I love it. So I was hoping I that I love a notebook. I have a shelf full of notebooks, so this will happily be added perfect. on there. Oh, it's a good I little, like, pocket-sized one if you ever want to, like, perfect. go out into the field and take notes. You know, if I'm ever <laughs> out in the field. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this seems... Like it needed a cap. Its cap is in there somewhere. <laughs> that was a bonus that I, it's it's an invisible pen. Um, I thought it was. I was like, this reminds me of invisible pens so from my childhood. Yeah, so the reason I sent you that is because, well, one, I ordered a pack of invisible pens for something else that I can't really talk about um, in case somebody else is listening to this. But I wanted to give you one. And uh, there's a card in there for you that has some invisible ink written inside of the card. So you can use okay. the, the cap. I just will help you got, read it. <laughs> I just got the to the card. Um, oh, this is so pretty. For you on your birthday. Very beautiful uh, card. Wow, I love that. Can I read it out loud? Sure. I don't remember what I wrote. <laughs> I think it's fine. My pal, look at us getting so old. <laughs> One might even say we are growing older. Little hint to your gift. Oh, a pumpkin? No. It's growing? No, oh. you'll see. <laughs> the front of the card is also a theme or a hint. Oh, you're right. Okay. Mm, flowers, okay. <laughs> mm. I love you so much. Can't wait to be with you again to drink tea, collect sea glass, and buddy read graphic novels. Damn. You've really painted a beautiful picture. <laughs> You're the best. I hope you have the best birthday. Love, Ray. And I love the uh, purple pen that you use. Yes. So is the invisible stuff on here? Yep. Oh, that's so funny because it's literally invisible. I, I know. You see. would never even know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got another book. Oh, my. You have spoiled me, Ray. I really did not expect this much stuff. <gasps> oh. I'm already a little stressed. <laughs> it's called Please Look After Mom. That's so, what happened? What's going on? What's going on when with 69 mom? year old Sonyo is se separated from her husband among the crowds of the Seoul subway station, her family begins a desperate search to find her. Oh, this is so stressful. <laughs> I'm imagining my own mom scared, oh. scared and alone. Yet, as long held secrets and private sorrows begin to reveal themselves, they are forced to wonder how well did they actually know that woman they call? mom <gasps> i love it where did you get it how did you find it what do you know about it i What's found it at on? the thrift store and i was like this looks too cool to leave behind and i was like should i keep it or should i send it to a friend or should i give it to someone as a gift and i like couldn't because i was like it sounds so I good think, but i also wanted to send you another book so i was like ah, i'm just gonna send it and so yeah I've, i mean i've definitely you. seen that on lists of like top korean literature so oh, that's also okay, what fantastic. caught my eye about it i had i have heard of it so and you just Let's recently read a book here. that concerning my daughter. So it's like about yes. a mother-daughter relationship. So I thought, oh, and I, I could give that. you some more of that. I really love that. Um, so it, the, the author is Kyung Suk Shin, and it's translated from the Korean by Shi Young Kim. Incredible. Boom. Wow. That's a good... <gasps> I feel socks? Ah! <laughs> uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, read the packaging. Plantable paper. Designed in Canada, ethically made in Italy... Friday Sock Co. So this is eco-friendly plantable paper. Plant it in soil, keep it moist, and place in the sun to grow wild flowers. Wow. I cool? love that. That is so cool. It also just looks really pleasant. Yeah. Did you ever make paper as a kid? <sighs> no. I did paper mache. Like a, yeah, <laughs> similar to that. I, I remember doing... Uh, these are really nice socks. I thought you'd like them. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, I remember making paper as a kid as like some field trip activity oh. once. And it looked a lot like that. That's so pretty. Well, that makes me want to wow. do that now. Winning. Okay. <laughs> oh, my 
god, two little things. Oh my god, it's a little Totoro pin. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's so cute. Ray, I have a really similar one. And I so I could line them up to yeah, do the like. I know. I was thinking oh, about that. Like I saw so it and I was like, cute. that's so cute. I have to get it for Ariel. And as I was leaving the store, I was like, wait, I think she already has that. Like, because I remember when you I bought it. I have a similar with that purse. one. Yeah. yeah, with that blue purse. Okay. I will. That's so cute. I'll put friends. them together. They yeah. can be little buddies. Oh. <laughs> Okay, what's that? I this? don't know what's in that. I, would, I don't Feels remember. Feels like coasters? Oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> really had to bundle is them it, up. Is it coasters? Oh, my God. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> <gasps> oh, wow. Okay, I think my new favorite birthday present is Halloween decor. Right? Because it's, like, perfectly timed. My birthday being right at the end of September yeah. is when you want to start putting stuff out. Oh! <gasps> You guys, I got three little coasters. Well, I think they're coasters. I don't know what they are, coasters. honestly, because they're almost like slightly bowl-like, but they're really they're tiny. Li I think they're coasters. Like I you couldn't quite put soy sauce in that. It would fall out. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know what they are, but I just had to they're, get them. They're three little pumpkins with really lovely pastel shapes. Uh, I mean, color, sorry, <laughs> in little pumpkin shapes. Oh, wow. Yeah, I couldn't, I just couldn't leave them behind. They were too cute. That's a quality good right there. That's a quality <laughs> good. Heck wow. Yeah. This is, I'm amazed at how much you've given me. This is I, I kind of went overboard a little, maybe, because I was like, it never oh. felt like enough. Oh, there's the I lid. Got the, <laughs> I remember these pens so much. Okay, let's see if I can, is it dark enough? Oh, oh there's a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> It works really well. It works really well. That's my it favorite thing. It does work really well. Okay, look, I'm going to show on camera how blank this thing is. And then I'm going to try and show. I really, yeah, I think it shows markings. Uh, that's so funny. I did funny some little this. invisible drawings. That's so funny. There's a ghost. It says ghost with feet. <laughs> <laughs> this is a song. <laughs> and a flower. <laughs> I'm bad at drawing. Oh. Ben, that's good stuff. I wonder how long Invisible Ink lasts. That's yeah, I don't know. Look that up. It's a lot okay. of fun, Oh, washi tape. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. You know what? This is perfect because um, I'm running low on my current washi perfect. tape dispenser tape. So I could have this as the next one Yeah, I know I how much you... I love that Like people often will like buy washi tape but not use it. But I feel like you actually use it. So I, I use felt, it for I everything. felt good about buying that for you. I No, I really actually run through washi tape. And I feel the same way. I used to be more precious about mm. it because it's so pretty. But yeah. now I'm like, why use other tape when I could use washi tape? Every time tape, I get a card there? or something from you that has washi tape on it, I'm like, oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> All right. I think this is the last thing in the bag. Ooh! Flower Zodiac card set. Oh, okay. Nine sticker cards and a seed pack. I am a Libra. It's true. I don't know <laughs> if that's good or not. Um, yeah, I have no idea what's inside of that package because I couldn't open it. So I was just intrigued by the seed aspect. I wanted to give you something yeah, to grow. Yeah, so there's the beautiful seeds. That's so exciting because basically now I have to think about whether I want to plant because I could plant these just in like a pot but yeah. i think i want to plant them in my garden yeah next maybe wait year. until springtime or whatever what are these oh these are st stickers what, what? Oh, how exciting i know Libra okay, stickers? this one has stickers all over <laughs> oh it God, so that's cute. fun because i do use stickers on like when i send cards and stuff this is just a very pretty thing that says libra, libra. On it. um oh my god wait some of these are oh wait a lot of these are stickers ray oh that's exciting i thought it was They're just cards so and i was like what does that even mean they're so pretty. There's like a lot of different oh, flower stickers oh, here. Oh, that worked out. That I'll definitely use. That's so lovely. Maybe I'll put one on my e-reader. <gasps> yeah, <laughs> good idea. Uh, and then it says hydrangea is the Libra flower. According to Japanese legend, hydrangeas are associated with apologies and gratitude. Ooh. Today they are nostalgic reminders of grandma's summer garden and bring about promises of romance to come. Romance to come? Uh-oh. I'm in a I'm in a committed relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to confuse you. <laughs> Start oh, drama. Man. Raylene, what a beautiful gift set. Oh my god. Yay. I literally have a mountain of goodies next to me. So many things. Me. Yeah, lots of pumpkins, lots of flowers. Oh. Okay, look. Yeah. I mean, you can't actually see, but I'm going to put this pumpkin down here. Okay, <laughs> that's there. And I'm going to put my water bottle on it. <laughs> I just don't know it if that's what it's meant perfectly. for. But <laughs> it worked perfectly, It'll though. be fine. <laughs> <laughs> what else could they be for, though? I don't know. Just, I guess it could just be decorative. Yeah, I don't know. Does or it say? Or for salt? Salt? No. Mm. 
<laughs> you could place a single flash drive inside of each one as a special yeah, little true. platform. Yeah, that's true. It could be. That's kind of a nice idea because in front of me right now, I have this little tiny little bird bowl. Oh, that's cute. And it, it's also very shallow. Yeah. And yeah, I just have like toonies, a ring, and a tiny egg. <laughs> toonies? I don't know. <laughs> on there. So I could switch it out for a pumpkin one. It's true. To be more festive. That's, yeah. I love them. Wow. Yeah. I know you'll find Somebody in the comments to is going to be like, it's obviously. Can we for soap? Ooh, yeah. See, that makes the most sense so far out of everything we've said. <laughs> <laughs> so you can have one in each bathroom or in the kitchen or. Wow. Thank you so much. You are I, welcome. You know what? If I didn't get any presents from anyone else, I would already be happy. Yay. Be wonderful. Winning. Thank you. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, maybe we should transition into your book haul. Sure. So what did so, you get? Yeah. So it's funny because I actually didn't buy anything, but I have okay. uh, received three books and one I'm borrowing from a friend that I wanted to mention because it's like just perfect. So I'll start okay. from the top. So when I went to that outdoor book sale a few weeks ago, my yeah. friend that same weekend, there was another book sale happening like an hour and a half away. So she went to that mm. one and then I went to the one that was close to me and she found a copy of People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. And she Amazing. just gave it to me when I saw her on Friday. So I That's so nice. technically I bought this because I paid her for it, but I did forget <laughs> that I had it coming. So it's kind of like a little mm -hmm. surprise book haul. And then I also once again forgot that i had books coming from coach house books so as you'll remember oh, i got a, three neato. books from coach house books a few weeks ago um the lovely Lindsay from coach house sent me those and this one was not coming out until october so i had to wait for it and so i kind of forgot it was coming oh, okay. but i'm very excited about this one it's cool. called yara by tamara faith Berger, and it's got a very cool cover as you'll see it's got oh, beautiful a woman's face within creepy. the letters it is kind of creepy um but listen to this i'll just read you the beginning of the the synopsis Distraught that her teenage daughter is in love with a woman a decade older, Yara's mother sends mm. her away from their home in Brazil to Israel on a birthright trip for Jewish youth. Freed from her increasingly controlling and jealous girlfriend, Yara is determined to forge her own path and fo follow her desires. But birthright takes a debaucherous turn and Yara uh -oh. flees Israel for Toronto and then California. As she wanders, Ooh. Yara is forced to reframe her relationship and her ideas around consent. Set in the sex tape panicked early 2000s, Yara is a reverse caution tale about what the body can teach us that just mm. sounds so cool and um it apparently really sheila good. hetty has given this a good review sheila sheila and also roxanne gay and i'm sure many others so it seems like it could be a hot new read so i'm really excited to own that <laughs> um but Lindsay threw in a bonus book that i didn't know about which is kind of cute too it's called what yeah. we talk about when we talk about dumplings <laughs> what <laughs> and it's edited by john lorink Introduction by Karen Liu and illustrations by Megan Lim. So it's like, I don't know if they're short stories or essays, but they're all Whoa. about dumplings, I guess. I <laughs> and she dumplings. sent this to me because obviously I've been talking about food books and restaurant books and oh, cooking. Oh, right. So of course. at first I was kind of confused by this, but now I think I'm pretty excited about it, actually. It's very <laughs> niche, very niche, but I, niche. I'm into it. And then the last book is one that I'm actually mm. just borrowing from a friend. I just got it over the weekend and it's Practical Magic by Alice Hoffman. Ooh. So this, I have kind of like a, a bit of a history with Practical Magic in that my friend and I watched the movie last year, the year before, and we're so excited to watch it and just, yeah. it didn't hit for some reason, we didn't That's really like it, which is really sad because like the vibes in that movie are so good, but the actual movie itself just didn't work for some reason. I do want to like rewatch it because I don't really remember why <laughs> I didn't like it, but yeah. I do want to give it a second chance by reading the book because um, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure the book will have a totally different kind of vibe than the movie, but we'll see. I so, just I watched Practical Magic oh, really? for the first time oh God, uh, a couple days ago. And I was going to put it as my movie to movie, but I've watched a lot of movies this week. So yeah. instead, I'll just talk about it now real quick. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Oh, good. But I did feel like it went on a little too long mm. that somehow the characters weren't well established. Like yeah. too much was going on. And... I was like, I watched it and I was like, you know what? That was really cool. It's so witchy. It's yeah. so spooky. Like it's got really good vibes. And then I forgot about it. <laughs> like until you mentioned yeah. that, 
I forgot that I'd watched it. Yeah, like, I don't know. And For I some reason, like, it just doesn't that's stick so in your... Odd. Like, there's something missing about it. I don't know. There's something missing. For yeah. sure. Yeah. That's so interesting. But I'm excited about the book. And I know you have the book, right? Is that something I that's do, still on your I do own it. Yeah, I've had it for so long. Yeah. Very cool. Well, that's yeah. it. That's my little my Cool. Little haul. Let me tell you about what I read this week. Please. I think it will surprise and amaze. No, it won't. I, I take that <laughs> it back. It often it's does. Really, I wish that it was, but it's not. Um, okay, so the first thing that I read and finished this week was Donuts and Doom Ooh. by Balatz Lorenzi. Balatz Lorenzi is a comic book artist who was born in Hungary and now lives in Scotland. He describes his new book, Donuts and Doom, which was published in 2022 as a magical rom-com. This was really cute. Mm -hmm. That is basically my entire oh, review shit. of it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, Raylene? Yeah, like, I hate that. It was cute. I don't have anything necessarily against what it was doing. Mm -hmm. But I would say, like, the more I think about it, the more I sit with it, the more I'm like, it basically just felt like an episode of yeah. a cute show. Yeah, with it didn't these go two deeper. characters who say that again, sorry. It just like didn't go deeper, like it wasn't exactly. a full story. It felt like a twenty-minute episode of a cute show. Yeah, and I liked the characters a lot. They were they were really cool. So basically, it starts with um, our witch character. She's at an exam to like get her like certificate certificate to be a fully licensed Ooh, witch okay. and she fails her exam so she's in a really bad mood she goes to this character's donut shop she's a musician who just works at this donut shop and uh they're out of the witch's favorite donut and so the don't <gasps> the, this is already like the witch's worst day ever yeah our friend over here is also having a worst day ever so it's just kind of like they're not being kind to mm -hmm. each other tensions are rising and then the witch has like a moment where she curses the shop by accident and it has some repercussions for the musician main character and because mm -hmm. of this they kind of get entangled a little bit and yeah. they have to kind of keep meeting and they fall in love and it was cute yeah but it just for me it didn't go any farther than it being cute mm -hmm. i do recommend this if you love witches if you're like oh if i know that there are people that are like always searching for witch content mm -hmm. you know they're like i want more witch stories if that's you i really recommend this i did like it i would say just borrow it from your library um i also felt like it was a little samey with the illustrations yeah and i was gonna say the, I, thought, um, I was hoping it would be pink inside yeah no it's blue with a, a few pink oh, okay. details but yeah, so I bought this one last November. I have the oh. receipt in it. Um, I bought it last November, read it this September. So I read it in less than a year. That's pretty a good. Win. <laughs> That's a big win. That's a win. The other thing I read, this is kind of funny. I read Lunch Poems by oh. Frank O'Hara. Frank O'Hara was born in 1926 in Maryland, grew up in Crafton, Massachusetts, went to school at the University of Michigan and Harvard University, but moved to New York City in his 20s where he lived for the rest of his life. He was a museum curator at MoMA, served in the US Navy during World War II, was a professional pianist and an art critic, but is best remembered as a poet. He died at the age of 40 in a car accident. I loved reading this. I had such a good time. What's funny though is I I wouldn't I would still give this like a three-ish out of five. Oh, Sounds okay. insane. <laughs> like whenever you like read a classic and you don't enjoy it personally, yeah. there's something that just feels kind of wacky about that because while reading it, I was just like I really did enjoy it so much, but I think the things that I enjoyed weren't exactly the poems. It was it was a little bit of just like, Raylene, this is the first poetry collection I've read this year. Oh my gosh. And it was, it's like one of the first poetry classics that I've read in a long time. And yeah. it just felt like going back to these, this place that I really love. And I'm like, oh yeah, he's talking about Allen Ginsberg and they're talking about this and they're in New York and it's the fifties and it's the sixties. And I'm yeah. like, I'm there with him. I was just enjoying the whole buzz of it as a thing totally. in the world, but not so much the poems themselves. Mm, okay, that makes sense. Um, there was a lot of great lines. I underlined a lot of really good lines and I bookmarked a few pages with some poems that I did really like, but I didn't, I don't know, I, there was no poem where I was like, wow, I need to write that down or yeah. I wanna remember that. Um, 
I will say I really enjoyed like the whole thing about Frank Turner there. Frank Turner, gosh, Frank O'Hara <laughs> that everyone's obsessed with is his specificity. Like he was basically like writing diary entries as poems and they're very specific and he just mentions his friend's names and talks about the street that he's on and yeah. like talks a lot about lunch. The man oh. loves lunch. Um so anyways, it was it was fun to get back into poetry yeah. and I'm like really excited to keep going with poetry i want to keep reading i want to take this as like yeah keep going keep going like keep the motivation mm-hmm, up mm-hmm. um and i'm really glad that i've read it because now when people talk about f- lunch poems i i know exactly what they're talking Perfect. about but it was a little bit of a okay yeah cool all right glad i checked that off but next yeah yeah i hear you <laughs> yeah so those are the things that i read this week cool which is great well i did manage to finish reading if it bleeds by stephen Ooh. king this collection contains four novellas titled mr harrigan's phone the life of chuck if it bleeds and rat in these stories king addresses topics like death technology and what it means to live meaningfully in if it bleeds king brings back fan favorite character holly gibney picking up a couple of years after the events of the outsider this one kind of was like a long time coming i don't know i feel like i have just haven't been like reading as much as i usually do in the past couple of weeks so i read the last like quarter of this just yesterday i kind of just yeah. blasted through it because i i did really want to be able to review it today and i really enjoyed it though like as slowly as i read it i would say it's up there as like Ooh, not okay. like a favorite but like you know sub in the top like it's like a b least. yeah it's like if it's not in my cool. a list but it's in the b list for sure like i really enjoyed yeah. it of all of his like books of shorter fiction i think this probably would be my favorite overall mm. because i really enjoyed each story and each one was like very different and i mean a couple of them were totally different from what i would expect stephen king to write in the first place so that was kind of cool like to just get a new fresh take on on stephen king and like i've mentioned um holly gibney is one of my favorite characters and she's been popping up in all sorts of different books and stories recently and this one for those listening who have read stephen king and might be wondering this story definitely spoils like things from the bill hodges trilogy and the outsider because it takes place specifically after all of these crazy events have happened and she talks about like yeah this is how that moment ended like this this was the resolution of the book the outsider essentially so if you want to read this book like go into it knowing that you will be spoiled for the other books if you haven't read them yet um but you could still enjoy it by itself if you don't care about that it explains the situation well enough that you will like understand where you're at um but i I found that to be like an interesting way to do that like i kind of wish he had almost just made it its own book because i feel like that could be Mm. really kind of confusing for people who don't know what's going on but Okay. Yeah. I really liked it though. Like that was the longest story out of the collection. And so I had a really good time spending lots of time with Holly and mm. uh, Jerome and Barbara are characters that were from the Bill Hodges trilogy that you don't see in The Outsider. So it's there in the story as well, which is really fun. So if you're a bit of a Stephen King nerd like me, it was a good time. <laughs> so yeah, overall, I really, really enjoyed that. Um, have you started reading anything new? Yes, and I'm I'm so hyped on it. I'm, I'm I'm so like, could this be a new favorite book of mine? What? I don't think I like the cover, but <laughs> that is what it is. It is the trial by <gasps> Kafka. Oh, I love that cover. Those covers are so weird. I've seen that's the all thing. Of them. I like I like it conceptually, but like when I'm actually holding it, I'm like, it does actually make me a little uncomfortable. <laughs> 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 Which I, is the point. Yeah. Uh, I have to read you the first line of this book. Oh, yeah. I have a parking ticket in here that I need to pay. That's <laughs> uh, my own business, I Oops. suppose. Listen, I think it's so... I, I hate getting... It happens to me occasionally. I will get a parking ticket yeah. for street cleaning. What? Do you know about this? No. What does that mean? <laughs> Basic, basically, like, one side of the street you can't park on mm. on Friday nights from midnight oh, okay. to 5 a.m. Yeah. because they're doing street cleaning. And then on the other side of the road, you can't park on there on Thursdays. But c- there's something wrong with my brain where I always think <laughs> Friday at midnight, that's Saturday. And yeah. so I think that it means Saturday is the day that I can't oh, park. Oh, no. But it was Friday. I don't know. I got confused and I got this ticket. Thankfully, it was, it's only $25. That's besides the point. Okay. <clears throat> the first line of this book is iconic. Somebody must have made a false accusation against Joseph K. For he was arrested one morning without having done anything wrong. Ooh, that's Uh-oh. good. 
I know. That's really good. And so it starts with um, his breakfast doesn't arrive. And he's like, what's going on? He's like kind of in a boarding house situation. Okay. Um, he's like, what's my breakfast? And he rings the bell. And then a random guy comes in and is like, uh, you need to get dressed because you're under arrest. And oh. our man's like, OK, what's going on? Like, what's the warrant? And basically, they're all of these policy people. That's uh -huh. what me and CJ, my brother, call people who just like are sticking to the policy that they were told to mm, stick to no more than just yeah. common sense yeah. more than human kindness <sighs> yeah. they're like yeah. well listen dude it's got nothing to do with me i'm just here to arrest you and take you to the next guy and the next guy's just there to take you to the next yeah. guy and everyone's just like no one's seeing reason and so suddenly he's gonna get arrested and have to go and like do a trial for his life what? even though he hasn't actually done anything wrong That's so crazy. it's Ka kafka is like okay you know when people say that's very orwellian mm -hmm. um that just means like very dystopian and security and privacy and the government, yeah. like those themes. Kafka-esque, people will say, that's very Kafka-esque. That means that it's very bureaucratic and it's like a nightmare that you can't escape because people are not on your side and mm. bureau bureaucracy has overruled everything. Um, and so I haven't read any Kafka other than Metamorphosis. Mm, I haven't read and any. So I'm, okay, yeah, Metamorphosis is, is a is an interesting one basically the main character wakes up and he's a cockroach yeah, and he's like is he a cockroach i think it's he's a, a cockroach bug. yeah he's a disgusting bug <laughs> and he's just like oh god i can't leave my room or everyone's gonna get like mad at me <laughs> and he's like i'm a i'm a terrible disgusting bug and it's like a nightmare um and so yeah he's clearly a stressed out guy this kafka <laughs> yeah but this one sounds but, really um, cool i've never known what that one was about like really the metamorphosis good. is the only story that i knew the basic plot of <laughs> for some reason basically i have had a bureaucratic nightmare of my own not with the parking <laughs> ticket but that will probably be a part of it but basically like i've had a nightmare with bureaucracy lately and just trying to get little things done mm. that they're like well you need this form and i'm like how do i get that form and like, you got to call that other department i'm like how does this our system right it's crazy. and it's just driving me crazy and i've been thinking about writing something about it and i was like i think what i'm thinking of is is like this kafka-esque thing i was like mm -hmm. i should read kafka that's so awesome. i started it's so good i love that so well good. i started a book i mean i barely barely started it but i did want to just yeah. give a shout out because i'm also reading a classic um Whoa. this was chosen for me in part by our patrons because I couldn't decide what to read next. I had six kind of fall-ish books that I was like, I want to read one of these, but I don't know where to start. Yeah. So I posted a poll on our Patreon and this one won by a landslide. Everybody Whoa. wants me to read Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. <laughs> So that's this been is on my, my radar, next read. Cause that's a gothicy Halloweenish. Gothicy, book, right? yeah. Because I specifically said I wanted something that's spooky and kind of mm. rainy vibes, and people were like, mm. "This one is that." Um, and I don't really know much about it at all. Like I know cool. that there's a woman who falls in love with this man and probably marries him, but there's like a, I don't know if it's an actual ghost or just like the presence of his his previous wife is just kind of. E everywhere in the house and like yeah. i know that like the house and kind of the landscape like the environment is kind of almost like a character in this book like it's okay. very important so i'm hoping that it'll be rainy and suit the fall vibes of what i've got going on but yeah i've literally read the first like three pages so i have nothing to say yet but i'm really excited to finally be reading this um another thing i'll say is this is one of the books that has been on my tbr the longest like if i look at my goodreads oh. I've had Goodreads wow. since 2010, cool. right? So it was one of the first books that I added that I still to this day have not read. <laughs> yeah. So it wow. feels good to be attacking that one. Finally. Yeah, I mean, that's amazing. I bought this book in Prague in 2015. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Um, because he's he's from Prague. He's oh, from there you go. Well, it's complicated. What what, what, what what I'll call for this moment the Czech Republic. Yeah. But um, whoa, I know I'm aware it's complicated. But yeah, I, when I was there, I was like, wow, I want to buy something by a, an author from this country, mm -hmm. and it was Kafka. And I was like, cool. So this was from 2015. This has been sitting I'm on my. I'm so show glad you're reading it. That's awesome. I know. It's about time. It's so exciting. That's I a know. cool potato awesome. right there. That's funny that we both ended up with little classics. Yeah. <laughs> Look at us. Look at us go. Pretty cool. I guess we're pretty cool. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, I think next up we should do our interview with Mr. James. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to go record it and then we'll come back. But yeah, we're excited to talk with James. And then afterwards, make sure to come back because so stick around because we're <laughs> going to be doing our quarterly update. Yeah. 
Hey everyone, we are here today with James of Shelf Worn Drawn. We're so happy to have you here, James. Thanks for joining us. Hi, glad to be here. We are so excited about the beautiful bookmarks that you've made us and everyone who's a part of the Bookmark Subscription Club either has them or they are happily on their way through <laughs> some postal service on their way to these lucky, happy people. Um, but we're really excited to ask you some questions to get to know you a little bit better. And so we're gonna just dive right in Oh, with the heart, <laughs> maybe the hardest of them all. What is your favorite book? Uh, yeah. So, has anyone ever answered <laughs> with like a definitive answer, and then a I full stop? So. I don't no. think it's possible. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, one well, one of the uh, uh, things that I draw a lot are, are drawings of people's favorite books, as I've done with the mm -hmm. with the bookmarks. So, I've done my own one like mm. three times. And I've, I've just redone mm. it, and then I've I've had a look and compared <laughs> what always turns up. Um, yeah. So I think kind of the 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 thing that that I will always draw first is uh, his Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. Oh yeah. Um, because like, I read that when I was like ten, and then I read it again when I was like at university, and then a few yeah. times in adulthood. And uh, yeah, that it's it's always like, oh yeah, that that is great. Mm. That's that's my favorite thing. <laughs> and there'll be like a different one of the three books will be my favorite each time. Oh, I was gonna ask if it was just like the whole collective or specific. Yeah, it, it just it too. just kind of works all together. It's it's really good. Mm -hmm. um, but then, other than that, which. Like, yeah, I don't know if I'd say that is definitely my favourite book, even though I've just said it. <laughs> so <laughs> Even though when someone asks me if it's my favourite book, it is my yeah, answer. Yeah. I don't I've know already if that's changed right. my mind. Yeah. <laughs> but then I'll then I'll continue. And um yeah, then I I think there's the kind of recency bias thing mm, where absolutely. usually my yeah, I, I will quite often finish a book and say, That's my favourite book. Or or I'll or I'll say that ten pages mm. in or something. Um this book uh, I read a couple of years ago called Reservoir 13 by John McGregor. Yeah, I feel like I've seen the cover for that. Yeah, and that's uh, that that was one where kind of 10 pages in I was thinking, oh, this is, this is my favourite book. This is fantastic. <laughs> um, and it, it kind of starts with a, uh, a, a girl has gone missing uh, in, in a little village and you it's kind of set up like it's going to be a, a murder mystery or a or a whodunit. Mm. Um, mm. But then every chapter, it just kind of follows the lives of the same villagers like a year later and a year later. And, and this kind mm. of story is is kind of forgotten, but kind of wow. in the background. Um, oh, it's just amazing. Um, that sounds cool. That kind of sounds up your alley, really. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to check that out. It's great. You, you just don't know what uh, kind of what it's about. But it's it's fantastic, um, and then also in the last couple of years, uh, Lincoln in the Bardo by uh, oh, yeah, George that was Saunders. Yeah. Um, that was one that uh, I'll occasionally do this thing where I'm reading a book that I think is is fantastic, and I'll keep talking to my uh, wife about how great it is, and then I'll read out so many bits from it that she says, "Well, I'm not going to read it now." Because, because I know, <laughs> oh, I've basically already read it. Uh, I've shot myself in yeah. the foot a little and that, bit. That was definitely one one of those ones. Um, I have to ask if you kind of your like you said your job a little bit a big component of your job perhaps is illustrating people's favorite books. Yeah. Have you noticed one has risen to the top that you're like this one comes up a lot? Yeah, uh, Good Omens by uh, Terry Pratchett oh, Neil Gaiman really? is, is featured very very heavily. Oh, that's so interesting. Um, that kind of makes sense to me. The kind of person who would be like us, that's like really nerdy and happy to have their favorite <laughs> yeah. books illustrated. Yeah. Like, I'm going to pay a guy to do this for me. <laughs> to me, it seems like the kind of person who would love Good Omens as well. Yeah. Um, and, and then I think it's, it's gotta be I guess it, it's kind of like a, yeah, like a fancy book and a bit like a horror book and like a comedy book. Yeah. Um, so, and so I think it's, I think factors. it's like a kind of comfort kind of read for a lot of people definitely yeah that makes sense that's cool um all right right what's our next question next question is what was the best book you read last year mm. so i went uh, and had a look in my 
reading journal to find that out. Uh, good, good. <laughs> and yeah, there's there's a couple there that I thought might be it, but there's there's a book called um, The Fortnight in September by oh. R.C. Sheriff or R.C. Sharif, which mm. is um, do you know about Persephone Books, the publisher? Yeah, they're cool. They publish old, forgotten uh, oh, women. Women who should have been yeah. published. And Generally, e- except uh, the, this one's by a, a man. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but generally, they, no, they do, yeah. So um, yeah. I think they, uh, they kind of uh, spread out a, a bit. But they're, yeah, so yeah. generally it's things that have been out of print for a long time. And uh, this is from the 30s. And it's it's a really it's a really kind of English story about a family of four who are just like an ordinary family, and they're going on on holiday to the seaside for two weeks, um, and that's the whole plot. And it's so mm. amazing and kind of beautiful mm. and touching, and nothing really happens, and there's no kind of <laughs> denouement. There doesn't yeah. really. We love books like yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think that's that's my favorite kind of. Uh, book it, it's so it's so good and then um he's he's written like he wrote journey's end the uh world war one play that's that's yeah. uh, i'll say that quizzically because i haven't seen or, or read it <laughs> uh and wrote the he got an oscar i think or got nominated for an oscar for writing a screenplay oh. for a for a war film so he's one of those like uh multi-talented people but then he, he wrote another book that i read this year called Green Gates, which is about a guy who retires and him and his wife want to move out of London. And again, that's the whole story. But that I was oh. like gripped and I was <laughs> kind of tore through My it in, in three <laughs> days. Uh, yeah. This is like one of my fun facts. With, um, have you seen Community, hmm. yeah. James? Yeah, have you seen Community? Obviously you have, really. Um, yes, one of my favorite The favorites. Dean, the character who plays the Dean has won an Oscar for best screenplay. Yeah, the... That's like one of those people where you're, he wrote um, The yeah, Descendants. That's right. yeah. With Shailene Woodley oh, and George that's Clooney. That's funny, I didn't Isn't know that. It, <laughs> these people that like secretly are out here writing incredible scripts. Um, yeah. All right, well, okay, of all the books you've mentioned so far, I have not yet noticed a through line with genre. So I'm curious about uh, your answer to our next question, which is what is your favorite genre or the genre you tend to read the most of? Um, yeah, so I guess it would be books that aren't really about anything. That's not so. Nice. Yeah. It's not like uh, <laughs> yeah. you know a, a section in the bookshop. Um, but yeah, so I guess like modern fiction would be the thing that I read most. Um, mm-hmm. But then the thing that I would like to read most that I just can't find much of is uh, also maybe an unnamed genre that's like fantasy that you would find in the fiction section is mm, totally yeah. i totally know what you mean yeah so um piranesi and and jonathan yeah. strange by susanna clark uh and mm-hmm. um there's a book called little big by john crowley that i read a few mm. years ago um and there's and like short stories by like kelly link and uh Carmen maria machado uh, yeah, yeah, these kind of things where there's there's no reason it shouldn't be in the fancy sci-fi section because that is mm-hmm. entirely what they are. But it's maybe written by, yeah, yeah those those kind of fiction authors. Uh, totally. So I don't know if you've yeah, got any recommendations for those because I'm always kind of <laughs> looking for like. I know it's almost speculative fiction. It's almost like magical realism. It's like living in this an interesting crossroads. I'm going to have to think about a wreck and, and send that over to you. Yeah. But I did want to mention one of my favorite bookshops in Toronto, um, Type Books. Mm-hmm. They are famous because they actually have a section in their bookshop <gasps> called Plotless Fiction. Oh, cool. And it's all books about, and I think they actually have a t-shirt now that just says Plotless Fiction <laughs> on it or something because they like also love and specialize Great. in finding books that are kind of not about anything. Yeah. Um, I do love a book, a meandering book. Oh, it's, yeah, it's just like things about people's lives, Thinking, and those yeah, people might not thoughts. necessarily be like an adventurer or a whatever yeah. books are about, uh, <laughs> like a, <laughs> yeah, a romantic or whatever. Just yeah, 
just a guy like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just a person. Well, this leads into our next question. What are you currently reading? Mm-hmm. It's on the docket. Uh, so I've just... Uh, so I'm reading a couple of things that you've mentioned on the podcast before. <gasps> so over the last two days, I read Lapvona. Uh, oh, oh, my God. Which, what did you think? Uh, it was horrible. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and it's a crazy book and that one it is horrible because i've got uh, I've got guests uh, staying at the moment and um and uh, yeah and a few times i was kind of reading in in the front room and, and went, oh my god this is <laughs> this is dreadful <laughs> or read something out and everyone went Ugh. um yeah, but then disgusting. you know i read it in like disgusting. two days and uh that's the oh test. Yeah. yeah, I read She's it in an something. evening. Like I, I just blew through that whole thing. It was like whoa, like a fever dream when I got on the other side of that. Dream. And then that, I mean, that's like, um, you know, fancy, I guess, because unless that that woman did replace uh, her eyes with horse's eyes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that, I mean, it was <laughs> just a small hint of what there's to look forward Spoiler. to. Spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was pretty fascinating um and then uh i'm listening to the audiobook of holly the stephen king book at the moment oh, oh which how really... is it so far i haven't yeah, read that yet just finished okay so i think i'm about halfway into it it's it's pretty good it's like um it's very stephen kingy uh yeah. <laughs> in that <laughs> like I, I know I know very very well by now what Stephen King thinks about yes. the things that are happening <laughs> in the book, you know, because there's oh, like yeah. mm. <laughs> all the characters express Stephen King's opinion about things, um, yeah. which is fine. <laughs> um, it's yeah, it, I mean, it's this like it's in this kind of loose series of books about. Um, yeah, I actually just finished reading If It Bleeds, so yeah. I have just finished reading like that story about Holly. I talked about it earlier in the episode that <laughs> this is happening on. So okay, cool. That's very yeah, good. So I think I've only read the, I read Mr. Mercedes and the outsider, which were, yeah. I, mm. I like the outsider. Okay. I thought that was good. The outsider is um, one of my favorites. So, so good. But like, I'll, I'll, I'll always read them. And, and I know that every third Stephen King book, I'll think, Oh, that's fantastic. I love this. And then, yeah. and then every third one, I'll think, yeah, you know, what are you thinking? This is this is dreadful. Uh, and then and then the other third is 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 okay. Um, so. Do you have that. a favorite Stephen King? Uh, I really like Different Seasons, the the four yeah. oh. um, yeah. novellas, and I really novellas, like the one in yeah. that that is one of them that hasn't been turned into a film, which is the Breathing Method. Mm. I always forget about that one. Yeah, but, but I mean, because that doesn't, that's like an unfinished story. It doesn't really go anywhere, but there's a bit in it where the character joins this like gentleman's club and there's a library in the club full of books that, mm. that don't exist anywhere else. And mm. uh, and I don't know, that, that really kind of uh, helped fun. me. And then the uh, the one whose name I can't remember that's uh, 11-22-63. Yep, yep. Yes. Um, yeah, that's that's just great. I love that. Yeah, that one's oh, fantastic. I, love that. Yeah. I just ordered Misery for my mm-hmm. birthday with my birthday discount from Chapters. And so that's <laughs> on its way to me. And it might be my first ever Stephen King that I read. Cause oh, really? Because the oh, only wow. one I've... I know. The yeah. only one I've ever read by him is on writing, his memoir. Yeah. So it's, I've never read any of his actual fiction. <laughs> They're pretty um, good. There's, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, I've heard good things. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm over here having read 40 of them. So I, yeah. I want you to read one so badly. <laughs> it's so wild that I have it somehow. It, I mean, that, that's definitely one that, like people will want to recommend them to you because I think no one's yes. going to say, I love all of them. They're all fantastic. No, <laughs> but, impossible. Uh, yeah. yeah. I I just love Stephen King as a concept mm-hmm. that I've enjoyed <laughs> him as just a, a character that exists yeah. so much that I have found no need to actually read his books <laughs> for some reason. But now yeah. I'm like, yeah, I should I do. I am curious. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. What is your favorite bookshop? This is a fun. Oh, God, I love this question. What's your favorite bookshop? Yeah, that's um, that's kind of weirdly difficult as well. Um, yeah, it is. It really is. So, yeah. So I used to live in in London and there's lots of good ones. Um I'm I'm slightly kind of sad now that I think all of the good bookshops in London are, or mo- all, all all the kind of big ones you go to are, are like owned yeah. by 
Warth stones now. All of um, them. Don't. Don't. Foils. It's yeah, all one but guy. I do really <laughs> like uh, the big foils. I like the old big oh, foils. Yes, that's my and answer. I like the new. I love the new foils. Because <laughs> uh, it used to be that was, that was one of those ones where like it, it was just like a few doors down on the same road, and it was really like kind of Warrenish and and strange and badly mm. planned out. And then it closed down, and you thought, oh, they're going to ruin it, but then they open a big kind of bright shiny one, and it's it's fantastic. Yeah. Um. But then I really, really like uh, secondhand bookshops, and mm. where I've moved to in Winchester, there are a lot of um, well-read dead people who have given mm. their book collections to charity shops. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah! Uh, <laughs> so there's like a there's a, a Oxfam secondhand bookshop in Winchester that is it's only it's only like small and it's it's two floors but they've just got a fantastic like amazing range of, of modern fiction and like old penguins and, and things like that. And then there's a um there's another bookshop like right across the street that's like an antiquarium one on five floors and it's all dusty mm, and, oh wow. and and weird. And they've got like uh yeah it's just ev- everything that you are not looking for but you want and then if things yes. like mm. uh really cheap um God. The dream. and then the closest one to, there's loads of bookshops here which is great there's one called p and g wells that's about five minutes walk from my house and it's next oh, to was well, it's, it's next to the house i think the plaque says jane austen lived here but i think it's more true to say <gasps> she died there uh, <laughs> because oh, okay. she lived there for like two months and then and then that's that's where she uh, where she died Perished. um but wow. she used to like have an account there and it's it's really nice and, oh and kind God. of um that's very cool, so cool. Yeah. that's insane that's just insane the first <laughs> time that i saw shakespeare's grave i started crying and i don't even i did not expect that reaction even a little bit like i just thought cool i'll visit the grave and i'll see it and i'll be like cool yeah. it's a piece of stone yeah. and then walk on no i just actually cried and i was like with my friend i was like i don't know what's happening and then she started crying <laughs> so silly i don't know the idea of jane austen standing in a bookshop is just something about that, magical. Me, that you can now go to that's so cool it's, it's wow. pretty believable i love that it, answer like, it looks you know apart from the fact uh, they will have stephen king's holly on, on the shelf it looks like <laughs> sure you know, yeah yeah that's so cool that's hilarious. um all right well thank you for sharing all about your bookish life with us now we want to know about designing these bookmarks because they're really really fantastic and we'll have photos of them on the instagram and of course in the description and show notes of this episode we will link to james's instagram and everything um so that everyone can check out your beautiful art but yeah we'd love to know what was the design process like for these bookmarks um in specifically this project uh yeah so so you wanted to do so yeah so i've done these um drawings of like people's favorite books that i do like uh commissions of and then i don't know how i found you i found you somewhere on instagram oh that instagram and i I, uh (laughs) followed you ages ago and then when we were choosing artists i was like we've got to get this guy he does these amazing (laughs) things um yeah so we reached out uh yeah I'm, i'm glad you did um (laughs) <laughs> but then, uh, yeah, I I'd, I'd, I'd kind of done them all in, in kind of one format and not done bookmarks or kind of uh, yeah. or that kind of design. So the the design process was I, I sat kind of piling up books on, on the table for ages trying to work out how, how, <laughs> how it might it kind of work. Um, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and, and what I will usually do is, is kind of look and see whether there are like really... Uh, firstly, if there's like iconic covers, like spines for things, um, yeah, because you know, like you want the the capture in the rye that, that everyone has got the same kind of copy of that, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah, and then if there's not what the best ones are, or what the ones are that would go well together, um, yeah. But uh, it, it took a bit of kind of shuffling around and, and stuff, but. Uh, that's yeah. cool. I didn't know what that composition process would look like if you were like actually having physical books I, or whatever. I That's do do a lot of uh, so like books in the house are kind of mostly 
alphabetize at the moment, but then they'll they'll last that way mm. for like a week because then I'll have I'll, I'll be trying to sketch something and it won't be quite right, or I'll or I'll not be able to work out the kind of sizes of of um, or lengths of books in comparison to each other. So then I'll yeah. pull those books off shelf and be like, that's about the right length for that. That's about the right length for that, and and kind of pile things yeah. up and move them around a bit, and then sketch them again and and start again i love that um raylene i think we have one question right yes yeah the last question is also uh with relation to the bookmarks so um, you kind of mentioned a little bit like what was the it like doing making bookmarks and like how the sizing was totally different from what you usually do did that present any challenges i think it probably uh yeah it was i mean mostly i was (laughs) i think it's a kind of lack of my own spatial awareness when i was trying to work out how, how would you be able to see all these tiny books in, in like all in the same little uh, little thing? Okay, but it's funny because that's what I was imagining originally as yeah. well. Like I was totally imagining it as a vertical thing as opposed to a horizontal thing. And then when I got sent the horizontal ones, I was like, Ariel, obviously yeah. this makes so much more <laughs> There's sense. no way that would have worked. They would have been so tiny. Yeah. Uh, and they wouldn't have like filled up the whole bookmark either because they would have just be these little yeah. <laughs> stacks. <laughs> We'd need like a hundred books each or something. Yeah. Yeah, which would have taken two. Oh long. God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Unless they're all just penguins <laughs> with the same spines. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it took took a bit of, of shuffling around, but then um, yeah, I like I like how it looks. on like the the uh, the obverse, the other side with the mm, the pages. Yeah. That yes. Looks, that looks cool. Um, it looks really cool having. Because for people who haven't seen them yet, basically, I remember this is an audio podcast. So people are listening. <laughs> um, the front of the bookmark has the spines of it. But then if you flip it over to the back of the bookmark, it's as if you're looking at the back of the book. So you just see the different pages stuffed together. Mm-hmm. And it's really lovely. Yeah, um, it's super cool. It's a little 3D project, flippy pot project there. <laughs> Um, James, before you go, I know you also, didn't you just order in some journals? You're now doing some journals? Uh, yeah. Do you have those available? Yeah. So I've just done, yeah. uh, I've done some bookie journals and then some, uh, yeah. yeah, so I'm basically just trying to see what kind of, what looks good and, and buying yeah. stuff. And then, uh, I've also started using several of them. I do that quite a lot. Or I'll just order, oh. <laughs> like I order like sticker <laughs> sheets and then give give loads to my daughter to kind of stick on things and then stick them on stuff oh, myself awesome. and then uh, have to buy more. But um, yeah, so <laughs> yeah, it's so like uh, journals and bookmarks and stickers and prints. Um, lots yeah, of stuff. that's awesome. Well, we'll definitely link to your shop in the description if people want to check it out. I love your art style because it feels bookish without being a little cheesy, if you know what I mean. Like it doesn't feel. Um, too cringe. It just feels lovely. Thanks. So we'll link to that as well. Because um, I love the journal. I was like, mm, do I have to? Do I need another journal? Yeah, <laughs> probably yeah, not. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> but maybe one more. Um, it's been such a treat having you on, James. Thank you so much, and thank you again for doing our beautiful art. We're glad we could have you on. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you so much to James for coming on the podcast and for designing our beautiful bookmarks. Mm. We're very, very excited to have these bookmarks. They're so cool. Um, I feel like they were a little bit of wish fulfillment for us to have yeah. like bookmarks with favorite books on it. It's, it's wow. the dream. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. Wow. All right. So now we're going to do our quarterly update, yeah. which we're pretty excited about mm-hmm. i okay really and you messaged me the other day not messaged me we were like doing our meeting or something yeah. and you're like don't forget next week or whatever in two weeks we're gonna be doing our update and i was yeah. like oh, already <laughs> like it just feels like time flew. i know we're reaching the last quarter like it's happening now this is we're now. in it yeah we're in the last quarter yeah, yeah. um i actually calculated because for some of my numbers here i kind of wanted to determine things so i yeah. looked up what week of the year it is? It's the 39th week of the of 52 weeks. <laughs> and I mean, technically, since we've started a new system of the last week of the year is the next week of the new year, we're, we have that's, one less week. Than that's that. actually true. So we're on week 40, technically. Uh, for my math's sake, uh, maybe I should change these things. But so 40 divided by 52 equals 77%. So we are 77% of the way through our okay. reading year. Okay. Um, which I just feel is a little bit of a helpful yeah. factoid yeah. for us all. Um, all right. I want to tell you my stats, really. And I'm excited. I'm Please. excited. Okay. <laughs> so first of all, by September 25th, because we're recording on September 25th. Mm. So by September 25th of last year, I had read 20 books. Mm. This year, 
as of today, I have read 26 books. So I'm six books ahead of last year, which go. I think is interesting. I would have to read 1.8 books a week starting now yeah. in order to reach 50 books read this year. Now, reading 50 books is not one of my goals. It mm. has not been one of my goals, but it's just sort of like an overarching goal that I always have. Yeah. I'm always trying to get around that number. So that's seeming pretty impossible. <laughs> uh, yeah. I I don't think I'm going to become a person who suddenly is reading two books a week. I tend to just read a book a week, which is fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll see how that goes. That's interesting. Um, okay. As for my specific resolutions, okay. Mm -hmm. Extend my bookshelves. Mm. I'm pushing. It's gonna, I know it's gonna happen, but it is funny to me how long it's taken. Yeah. Because they are, I'm staring at a stack of wood <laughs> that's right there and it's all perfect on one side, but I have yeah. to do the other side of the wood. So it's moving along. I would say that I'm about 50% of the way done through that project. Okay. That's not bad. All right. Next uh, resolution was to read 12 classics. I have read, oh, can you guess, Ray? Mm, two or three. Let's say three. Five. Really? I guess yeah. it depends what you're counting. So, yeah. So I'm 41% done this goal. Do you think you're going to accomplish it? I kind of want to do a big push. Like, I what if you just read it. only classics for the exactly. rest of the year? Does that conflict yeah. with any of your other goals? Uh, a little bit, but not that much. Okay. Um, so the, the classics I've read are Lunch Poems by mm -hmm. Frank O'Hara, which came out in the 60s, 84 Chair and Cross Road by Helene right, Hinn, right. which was also also came out in the 60s, um, Bonjour Tristesse, which I have forgotten to write down here. I think that came out. Did that also come out in the 60s? I feel like Bonjour Tristesse. Let's confirm so that I can get this stat correcto mundo. Came out in the 50s, Ooh. 1954. Nice. Um, 1950s. Okay. And then I've read uh, The Blue Castle by Lucy Maud Montgomery, yep. which came out in the 1910s. <laughs> and True Grit, yep. which came out I in the 60s. I counted that as a classic too. So Yeah, in the 60s. So actually, the 60s are apparently uh, really overriding this whole situation yeah. for me. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm a 41% done that goal. And obviously I'm literally reading a classic now. So once I finish this, I will be 50%. I will have hit a 50% mark on that goal. So that's there you great. Go. Read three biographies. <laughs> I've read one. And I even now I'm worried that it didn't really count. Oh, because why not? I, I read um, On My Own Two Feet by Beverly Cleary. Yeah. And it's like, a, a I thought it was an, like an autobiography of her life because it literally it's not just about a theme it's just like her going through mm -hmm. every time of her life but at the beginning of it i realized it says a memoir mm. so now i'm like is it just a memoir i mean kind of so, yeah maybe yeah i don't hey, tricky tricky <laughs> oh well is it all the bookshops in nova scotia Ooh, yeah how are we doing there <sighs> not doing as well as i'd hoped by this point <laughs> i mean the summer is over that was supposed yeah. to be the big that was big supposed push. to, exactly, that was supposed to be the big push. And I honestly do think that because it was so rainy, I kept not planning these oh. trips where we'd have a trip planned and we'd yeah. be like, it's raining all weekend. Why would we drive out there? Like, it's not going to be fun. So it kind of disturbed plans a little bit. But on the website, I've fallen a little bit behind on updating it. And there's two-ish bookshops I maybe haven't even mentioned on the podcast. Oh. So I need to catch up on that psychologically. But uh, <laughs> I'm at 12 out of 36 visited. Okay. Which is 33%. Yeah. Not Sacred. anywhere near the 77% or whatever no. completion rate we should no. be at. <laughs> exactly. Shoot. So, okay. Those are where we're at with my goals. Okay. Yeah. Not the best, but I haven't given up hope. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why would you? We've still got time. It's kind of exciting because I kind of feel like, wait, okay, there is enough time. There's like three full months yeah. left. Yeah. Yeah to do a lot of good work here. Yeah, you um, just have so, to do but the it's, work. It's not enough. It's not like, it's not enough that I can goof off, yeah. but it is enough that I could still do these things. Absolutely. So it's kind of, we're at a sweet spot right here. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to get determined in October, I think. Yeah. It, it yeah, depends on where point. I'm at at the end of October. <laughs> um, a couple of fun facts from my statistics. I'm at 46% of American authors read. Mm. So that's interesting because this is the first year in a couple of years where like 
reading less than 50% American authors is not one of my official goals. Yeah. But it's still happening. That's which cool. is interesting. Um my most read genre with 20 at 22% is graphic novels, but then the second is nonfiction at 20%. Hmm. Physical books is writing the highest of format at 65%, but then it's e-readers and audiobooks tied at oh. 15% each. So that's cool. Very interesting. Uh, rating really has changed throughout the year. It started a lot stronger, and now the highest percent at 42% are three-star reads. I've mm -hmm. been reading a lot of books that I'm like, eh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I've read one book at two stars, no books at one star. So that's good. Nice. And a couple books at five stars, which is awesome. And then this is a little bit, I find this a little distressing personally. 65% mm -hmm. of the books I read mm -hmm. came out in the 2020s. Ooh, I had a feeling that was what you're going to say. <laughs> That's very interesting to me. Like, it's not just the majority of what I read. It's the vast majority yeah. of what I read are new releases from this year or last year, mm -hmm. which is wild to me. Yeah. So there you go. Those are some of my fun facts of where I'm at reaching the third quarter. What will I get done? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's fantastic. I um, in terms of my spreadsheet, I actually don't have a lot of the same data that you have readily available because usually what I would do is I have like all of my different columns with all this different information, and I would usually have the pie charts just like kind of there to be updated mm. throughout the year. But I decided this year I didn't want to do that. What I want to do is at oh. the end of the year I'll make all those pie charts, and it'll be like okay. a shock to see what did I do like I haven't been keeping track of big shock exactly like I haven't been keeping track of anything so at the end of the year I'll be like oh my god I only read one percent audiobooks this year crazy like right. I had no idea so I don't have all of that kind of data but I'll kind of do okay. a quick version of like what you did so I looked back to last year and I don't have exact dates but I do have the months where I like that I read books in so up okay. to the end of September last year I had read 75 books mm. and currently where we're at now i've read 71 which yeah, i think funny. makes that's so consistent yeah like pretty consistent but like i read a couple of longer books this year maybe so it slowed me down a little bit typical and i have not really... for last year yeah for the year before that i mean oh yeah but i don't think i have the months no i didn't have oh, the okay. months but i can tell you my total amount read was 104 by the end of the year so about so that the makes same. sense we're quarter of the way or yep. three quarters of the way through and you're at 75 that makes you're so consistent That's i know it's just the same every year but usually i listen to a lot more audiobooks i feel like i haven't been listening to that many audiobooks this year mm. so that's gonna slow me down and i mean i think i'll come quite shy of my 100 book um usual this year because i don't know really i feel like i feel like yeah i feel like maybe uh i also would like to maybe read a couple of big books by the end of the year yeah like, I don't know. Cool. So um, into my goals, I think I'm doing okay. pretty well for my goals. So my first one is to read a classic every quarter. And so far I've done that. And I'm now like you are reading a classic that yeah. will work for the last quarter because I'm just starting okay, it now. Cool. It's the very end of September. I'm obviously yeah. going to be reading this in October. So yeah. that's where I'm at. So I mean, the three that I've read are uh, True Grit as well. Amazing. I also read... Let me guess, look at my spreadsheet because I don't remember. What else did I read? <laughs> uh, Travels with Charlie by John Steinbeck. Okay, yep. Right. And then the first book I, re I read at the first classic <clears throat> of the quarter was uh, A Jest of God by Margaret Lawrence, mm. which was a random, random little book that I read. Yeah. So I wonder what years mine came out in to compare against yours. So Margaret Lawrence, that one was published in the 60s. True yep, Grit, True 60s. Grit, 60s. And Travels with Charlie, 60s. What? No <laughs> way. That's weird. When is Rebecca though? Thirties, so that'll 30s. change. Okay, yeah. That'll change yeah. things. So that'll That's funny. that'll break the cycle. Wow, <laughs> what the just, heck happened to us in the sixties? The sixties. I don't know. Um, <laughs> We're just my, obsessed with the sixties. We just are. I don't know why. <sighs> my next goal was to read six fantasy books, and I've only read three so far. Oh, so that's interesting. I, okay. I, yeah, I kind of fell off of that one a little bit. So that's going to be my big push in the the last quarter okay. here. Once I'm done this classic, I think I need to do a little fantasy moment but the problem is i want to read spooky hmm. books so it's like the fantasy is going to have to happen in november december potentially oh, God. so that's a little scary i'm a little scared about that <laughs> um however my most owned authors reading goal has yes. been completed i have oh done my God, that wow. i had seven authors that i wanted to read at least one of their books knock them off my tbr and i have done 
all of them. Whoa. So pretty excited about that. I've also read multiple Stephen King books and Stephen King was one of those authors. So I feel pretty good. I mean, just a random stat. I have read three Stephen King books just this month alone. So <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> but yeah, so I feel really good about that one. Nice. And then yeah. my last goal is to read 50% of the books that I buy this year. And right. I'm currently, I haven't added in these new books that I just got, so this is going to be skewed a little bit, but I'm currently at 34 out of 77, which is 44%. So I'm not oh, far off. Close. I could definitely do it. You could catch up. I just have also, to read Also, if you stopped buying books, I know. you would I know. help yourself there. I know. I, I've been telling myself that every time I buy a book, I'm like, you're shooting yourself in the foot, man. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah Ooh, so i feel like overall i'm doing okay i'm in the same boat as you like if i stick to my guns i can make this happen yeah, but if i don't if i let up. it fall apart then the goals will fall Ooh, apart that's but funny feeling pretty good and uh, this is kind of fun i'm not going to say what they are but i've already started planning my goals for next year and i'm really excited <gasps> about them i thought of a goal for next year as well <laughs> i have like a theme that i'm going to be doing i'm really excited a theme yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah you'll see that was just a little Whoa. spoiler to, to three months from now when we talk about us again. That's so exciting. Gosh. Okay. Well, there you go. Thank you guys so much for hanging out um, with us for this episode. We started doing these quarterly updates, not only because we think they're fun, but because you guys requested it. We had yep. a lot of people last year that were, that were like, could you like check in more regularly throughout the year so yeah. we can kind of track the goals? And I'm so glad we've done it because actually talking it about them out loud and checking yeah. in really does, has made me way more aware of them throughout the year. Totally. So thank you guys for that suggestion. It's been a lot of fun. Um, Yes, we're now going to go record our Patreon-only mini-podcast, The Movie Tub, where mm -hmm. we talk about movies we've seen. I'm going to talk about a horror movie because of spooky <gasps> season. Ooh. I watched It Follows. Oh. Woo! That's exciting. Very interesting. Yeah, excited to talk about that. And uh, we will catch you guys in the next episode. Bye! Bye.